Hello. Our devotion for today is entitled, God is Patient. And it is taken from 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 7 through 19. Peter writes, The end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be self-controlled and sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. Above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sins. Show hospitality to one another without grumbling. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies, in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. A suffering as a Christian. Beloved, don't be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you share Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or a thief or an evildoer or as a meddler. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name. For it is time for judgment to begin at the household of God, and if it begins with us, what will be the outcome for those who, don't, who do not obey the gospel of God? And if the righteous is scarcely saved, then what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. But many people have asked, can it be God's will that someone should suffer? The answer is yes. And the strange thing is that it's God's will that his beloved children should take suffering upon themselves. Now, to be clear, God is not the cause of suffering. It's the work of the adversary. It's caused by people who do the devil's will instead of God's. God could put a stop to suffering right now, by, but only by getting rid of everyone who causes it. And he doesn't want to do that because that would entail passing judgment. And that judgment will not come before God has exhausted all of his possibilities of saving more of his lost children, freeing them from the grasp of wickedness and leading them into the kingdom of forgiveness. So God is right now taking his time. He's patient. He gives the world yet another period of grace and people abuse it by doing even more evil. That's the price that has to be paid for mercy and grace. Suffering affects evil and good, the unrepentant as well as the repentant. Many become bitter and hard-hearted. When it affects God's children, however, God wants us to understand the connection. We should be willing to suffer, so forgiveness will continue to be available to the world. We've received the chance to come into the kingdom of forgiveness, and now we should help others receive that same chance. 
That's why we should be willing to suffer, to humble ourselves under God's powerful hand, forgive, and do what is good. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 9 states, Do not repay evil for evil, or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, bless. Also, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 17 states, For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you have suffered for us, and when you did, you prayed for your executioners and died for your tormentors. You suffered rather than judging them at that time, and you still refuse to judge our evil world. Instead, you keep the door open to the kingdom of forgiveness as you let your call go out. Lord, it's an honor and a privilege to suffer for you, that your blessing can reach out into the world, that you give us that chance, that we can be a part of something so tremendous. When you walk ahead of us, Lord, we willingly follow. Jesus, in your holy name we pray. Amen. God's blessings. I'll see you next time.